Elementor just dropped five massive updates. And here's how they make your websites better. Let me show you what's really going on behind the scenes, because this stuff could seriously change how you use Elementor. I've been building client websites with Elementor for over five years, and I've also coached people on how to use it the right way. And I keep up with every feature drop and update so you don't have to. And this one's big. We're not just getting new workflows, Elementor is actually fixing design issues we've been struggling with for years. Now, heads up, some of these features are a bit nerdy, but the practical use cases? Absolutely game-changing. Oh, and I'll be using one of my test setups to show you how it all works. But these changes apply no matter what kind of Elementor project you're working on. So in this video, I'll walk you through the most important updates and how to actually use them. And yes, I'm starting with my favorite one first. Subscribe now for more Elementor breakdowns. Again, I have to start with the new Editor V4 because this just is the update I'm most excited about and will change our web design workflow in a huge way. But please remember that everything concerning V4 is still alpha, meaning that things can break or don't work perfectly. It's just not ready yet and Elementor is still cooking. For the full activation walkthrough, watch this video on my channel where I show every step to enable V4, but for now, maybe keep it away from your live projects since it's still in alpha. So when you update Elementor to version 3.31, this is what it's added to the new editor. Now, the UI for adding variables finally changed and looks so much more intuitive now. So when we want to add, for example, a new color variable, like this, we now have these icons to click on and make our changes. The trick is that we can now add variables to classes, like with these headings, for example. Look, and then easily change colors later, without even having to touch the font family. That already is a lot faster and smarter, and also feels a lot more modern than the old way of defining global colors. Remember the struggle? Alright, the next update is a quick but huge one, because we finally get design effects right inside the Elementor editor. Let's just say we have this container with a background image, and we want to add a background blur effect. We now don't have to use additional custom code anymore. We can now just open the filter tab and choose whatever effect we want to have, like this. Look, and then tweak the settings, add multiple filters, or change the layering. Let me show you an example. One thing that every Elementor user always wants to add to their website and probably is the most searched for tutorial on YouTube is how to make menu background blur in Elementor. Well, we can now skip the tutorials and the additional code completely and jump to the filters directly. See? I love how easy this is now. Don't skip this video before I got the chance show you my favorite update at the end of this video. And speaking of faster workflows, we also get an upgraded class manager. Okay, with the next update, we get an improved class manager. We can search for classes, like this, and even see how often a certain class has been applied. It's indicated with this icon here. Plus, we can now visually see where styles come from. See this dot here? It changes color depending on where the style comes from. Pink is for local classes, meaning that the class is only active here, not connected anywhere else. It is kind of a default setting. Green for global meaning that the style is available everywhere in the project and stays in sync. To create a global class, first get your widget and enter your color, for example, like this. Now we can create a new class, name it, and again, give it a color. Then, right now what I do, and I will get better at this as I will be using the new editor to build my first landing page in the next video, so don't all miss it. I drag and drop the widget again, then click on style. Then I search for my class here. And when I click on it, it gets green, meaning we are in global, and it's applied to my widget. But then I have to apply the class again in the typography colors field. If I don't do it that way, I will get an orange dot. I'll explain in a few seconds. If there is a better and faster way, I will share it with you as soon as I know it. Okay, so gray means inherited, meaning that the style isn't set here, it's coming from somewhere else. In this case, with the font colors, it was just coming from the global typography styles, and I couldn't see a gray dot here. And lastly, orange means that there's a conflict. I got the orange dot when I first applied a manual, meaning local color to my headings, and then put an additional global class on top of it. Nice, 
And so now when we click on the dot, we also get a pop-up that gives more information about the style origin. Okay, this next update may look small, but it's a huge deal for Elementor websites. This new atomic component here, it's just a divider, right? Wrong. The divider is now a real semantic HR, meaning no extra wrappers, no bloated markup. That means less code on the page, faster load times, and better scores for accessibility and SEO. I will be using the divider more often from now on, whereas in the past I just ignored the widget to be honest. Alright, and if you don't have Elementor Pro yet, get it now via my link in description because otherwise you will miss out on these new Pro features. We now get the new cloud library. That means we can store and access our Elementor templates in the cloud. Anywhere, anytime. You're working on a client site and need that hero section you built last month? Just pull it straight from your library. No exporting, no zips, no importing JSON files. It also means you can keep all your templates synced across multiple projects, update it once, and the changes are available everywhere you use it. For anyone working with multiple clients or multiple websites, this is a huge time saver. I hope you found this breakdown helpful. If you want to see what's new in Elementor Editor v4, click this video here. I go step by step through everything you need to know before trying it yourself. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.